Jason, great to see you again. Good to see you, Joe. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate you taking some time. Now, first of all, how the heck have you been? You're down in the Miami area, right? Struggling in Miami. It's a hard life down here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, it's always nice to reconnect with you. You know, we've known each other uh, for roughly a decade. Uh, you've been so educational to me in terms of the growth of the MSP market, the key trends going on in the MSP market. So it's nice to connect with you today and then sort of double click on, on one segment, but it's a massive segment and it's a growing segment and it's the Apple segment. Could you describe to us what are the key trends you're seeing in the, in the Apple related market when it comes to MSPs? You know, usually when I talk to MSPs, what they're dealing with is they don't want to deal with these Apple devices. They've, they've got them in the portfolio already. And the blind spot is without that uh, level of knowledge internally to feel comfortable taking them on, they disqualify deals that come across their, their, their desks. Our portfolio last year saw nearly 60% growth of their licensing uh, within the Apple space. So, you know, while you hear a lot of the trends out there about how much Apple growth is out there, our MSPs within our portfolio are finding massive growth opportunities. That's awesome. So, so the MSP market is growing, just, just to put it in, um... Uh, some statistics. The MSP market grows. It, it depends on the economy, but it's growing eight to twelve percent a year. But then other segments, managed security, twenty percent. You're saying your MSPs are, are growing way faster than that with the with in, in the Apple segment, correct? That's right. Well, a lot of them do. If we get tactical about it, they're looking for companies that 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 are, just haven't found that piece yet. A lot of times, the people that are actually stroking the checks for those customer environments, they're the ones using the Macs. They're the right. ones who we need to provide that VIP experience and they're not getting that. They're getting, you know, <clears throat> something substandard to what the PCs are getting. Um, there's a lot of companies that are looking for employee choice. We saw Apple announce their new lineup uh, of devices last week, and it is the full gamut from studio level pro gear to really economical gear uh, with performance numbers Intel can't beat. So we're seeing a lot of adoption and the MSPs are ready to support it. They're able to take advantage of high margin business, very sticky retention based uh, customers. So it's, it's phenomenal for our MSPs. Awesome. So um, you mentioned Apple's announcements last week. We're recording this on uh, March 15th. So, so early March, 2022, Apple announces some new devices, um, continues to refresh the portfolio. I wanna draw a distinction here because when someone says Apple device, it can mean different things to different people. It can mean Mac, it can be an iPhone, iPad, et cetera. That's part one. Part two is when, when people talk about RMM software, uh, there's sort of general purpose RMM software to, to take care of Macs, but then there's MDM enhanced or ND, MDM integrated software to take care of Macs. What's, when you describe the Mac market, or excuse me, the Apple market, the device management market for Apple, how do you define it? And, and how, what do you think MSPs should be looking for? I think they should be looking, they need to be looking for an MDM. The only way to actually provision the device out of the box, out of the shrink wrap, without anybody touching it and be, being able to deploy software, um, anything you want on the machine, you now have to have MDM as that foundation to do so. So when we look at MDMs out there, none of them are multi-tenant and that's the beauty of what RMMs do. So we're the only ones that have a multi-tenant MDM platform in the market period. And that's why over half our revenue comes from the MSP sector, because we're the only ones where I can integrate not only the multiple MDMs for each customer, but even their IDP. So when it comes out of the box, it automatically takes them to a branded login page with the MSP's logo, or if you want the end user's logo, and they can log in with Azure AD, Okta, given the same Windows level experience with Microsoft Autopilot that they really demand on the Apple side. Got it. Okay. And I'm going to ask a dumb question. Uh, I'll show you how I'm, I'm getting old, right? Uh, when I started covering MDM a decade ago, uh, you know, the acronym stood for mobile device management, still the same acronym or has it evolved? Has the meaning changed over the last decade? You know, I think what we've really tried to rebrand it to be is a modern device management. Um, MDM still stands for mobile device management. It's still that same level of protocol, but, but just back to that same notion of making sure that user logs in with their IDP credentials to that device. I mean, people don't really know, you can take the serial number off the device itself, throw that into VM and totally replicate that person's environment. Uh, that's all that really happens. So there's, there's a real need for security here. Um, you know, I actually haven't told this story, especially publicly, but the earliest days of Adagy, uh, we had the, the chairman of Citibank um, was using all of, all of his personal devices, Apple. Citibank was all PCs. 
But here you got the chairman walking into Citibank with Adagy installed on all, all his Apple devices, right? I mean, what level of security do we need to make sure we're providing in our customer environments if we have that blind spot of Apple? Uh, and then the next point is scale. How are we going to scale our operations? Uh, remote control is the worst <laughs> utility possible for any scale. So patching just the, the, the area of hygienic uh, security and scale that we got to provide. Got it. Okay. So, um, and, and also when you say Apple devices, are, are you mainly focused on the Mac or do you have some interest in, in the iPad or iPhone, or is that really not an opportunity for, for the MSPs? What are your viewpoints there? So I've actually tracked that from the earliest days before even starting uh, at a G itself. We, we still don't see MSPs finding a lot of revenue opportunities directly on mobile, but they do take them on and manage them as a, as a suite. We have a tremendous amount of devices, uh, mo uh, phones and tablets that are being managed through Adagy. We actually have a patent that allows us to manage them live over MDM. Uh, we're the only ones that can do that. Uh, so we do see a lot of trends there, but the money makers, the workhorses of productivity and potential security issues are the Mac. And that's what we really try to hone in and focus on. Okay. And then your MSPs, as well as you, is there a sweet spot in the market in terms of end customer size that you see the MSPs managing for the Mac? Because I, Listen, I know the Mac scales everywhere. It's in small business, it's in mid-market, it's in enterprise, but where do you see the prime opportunities for MSPs in terms of where you're seeing the adoption for this uh, MDM? It's a good question. There's two things to that. We do see them on the SMB side, the law offices, medical, a lot of them are using uh, Apple devices themselves, but um, we're seeing a lot more on the mid-market side. With the multi-tenancy that we provide, you really have this opportunity to provide scale to mid-market deals where they've got you know, a few hundred max large uh, organizations. They don't have the team to focus in on this. And again, like I said at the beginning, focusing on companies that are trying to find tools and they don't have the expertise, get rid of the tools, right? It's about how we can scalably deliver those services. Uh, and, and that's where we're finding a lot of our customers going in and finding some massive deals that they wouldn't normally do on the PC side because you mm -hmm. have that knowledge there and they're cracking the code, finding these, these decent size uh, deals. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, what about, you know, as, as you push into the mid market and the enterprise, I do hear about more and more MSPs delivering co-managed services, it's sort of working exactly. side by side with the IT departments. Is that a trend you're seeing in your, in your MSP base? Absolutely. Because that's highly scalable. If I'm patching, I always say this to my MSPs, if you're patching one customer environment, you should be patching everybody together. Uh, and, and following out those, those trends, our third-party software patching, everything. But I can allow that help desk team to log in, provide remote control, behind the scenes utilities that they're used to. And, and now I've, that co-managed aspect, they're dealing with the high touch help desk level services. I'm delivering the highly scalable utilities that they can't do. So it's, it's a huge win-win for, for both the MSPs and those end customers as far as value goes. Okay, great. So, yeah, I mentioned we're talking here in March 2022. You gave us some historical data. You're seeing those trends continue in terms of the Mac growth. But look ahead for us. Do, do you see the trend continuing in terms of this healthy Mac opportunity for MSPs? And if so, why? Like, what's going to continue this fueling this growth? Look, I, I was never an Apple fanboy. I just, I was really good at Linux and everything else when I decided to dive into this overall. And at the time I started Adagy, they hadn't done a hard refresh on the Mac lineup over five years. There was legitimate hmm. rumors that the Mac was going to be end of life. All, you know, so much of the revenue was coming from the mobile phone industry. You fast forward to today, and it's a highly diverse lineup on the Mac side. When they are building their own chips that outperform Intel, everybody knows Intel's out when it comes to at least the Mac portfolio itself. They've got a leg up on, on so many things they're doing, a technology perspective, a packaging perspective for devices. We're going to see this trend continue at a very fast pace. Um, Apple loves high margin, high profit hardware, but they've got so much capability with those new chips to keep pushing that price down and still maintain margins. We're just going to see the growth. Nobody, nobody is, is shorting Apple anytime soon, right? Uh, and, and we know that this, this uh, penetration of the business market is continuing at a, at a great rate. So God, one okay. thing I would also recommend too, mm -hmm. You know, I, I make sure I do this with all of my, all MSPs I talk to. A great utility is Apple's ACN program, the Apple Consultancy Network, which literally lists you on the Apple website. So even just, you know, with us, we have simple half-day trainings that, that Apple uh, takes a certification for ACN. 
and you, you, you're immediately on the Apple locator, the ACN locator. So anybody who's looking for services out there, boom, they drop right to you. There's no cost to that. It's one thing Apple does, it doesn't have any sell through cost. So yeah, I would take huge advantage of that on the ACN side, get an Apple ACN. website. Got it. Okay. So, uh, you know, you sparked another question in that left field for me. I remember the days when Apple was shifting from PowerPC to Intel. Fast forward to present day, to your point, Apple shipped, ship, excuse me, shifting from Intel to its own technology again, its own microprocessors. Do you see that as a major refresh opportunity and sort of a consultative opportunity for the MSPs to get in, assist with the refresh, and then manage the resulting systems? It's a really good point because the heart, the security they put into this these new chipsets are, you know, huge difference, huge milestones. So depending on the type of business, a lot of our MSPs will, you know, they have FinTech uh, opportunities that pop up, banks, other things like that, healthcare too. You can go in there, you provide that refresh, a better experience. My M1 laptop lasts for days without charging. It's a huge uh, leg up in, in change there, but then you also have the enhanced security capabilities that they have there. Um, a lot of MSPs do want to make money on the VAR side of reselling hardware, but Apple's kind of crushed that for the most part. So, I mean, there is a refresh opportunity, which, which helps to get in there. But the other thing that Apple has is called Apple Business Manager. It's that ability to make sure the, the machines get provisioned out of the box, out of the shrink wrap. We have a super simple way we walk people through getting it set up. And you can do that for your customers. And it's a real sticky way to help, you know, you come in, you get them set up. And you have a much better experience. Even if you have a problem with the device, you just hit a button, automatically remotely wipe it, and it comes back in, reprovisions the whole system from, from the ground up by itself. Zero touch. So, yeah, so you're just delighting the end customer. They open up their new Mac and off they go, right? And everything's locked down, protected, remotely managed, correct? Yeah, and it, our MSPs talk about how awesome experience it is when they are able to do that. And the end user drops right to that login screen with the MSP's logo on it. It's like, well, these guys know what they're doing, right? Yeah. Um, other, other things like that, that I think really delight the, the experience of that Apple users uh, involvement. At the end of the day, we, we don't think about it all that often, but the only productivity uh, portal proxy that these people have, especially when we're talking about during COVID earlier, it's because of these computers. So we've got to give them the best opportunity to, to drive that productivity. I mean, this is, this is all they've got to drive their company's productivity, period. Yep, yep. Hey, listen, I, I know you're all about market education and helping the MSPs and, and, you're, and you're super modest in terms of the, the own business journey that you've been on. Adagy is no longer a startup. You guys have critical mass. Um, but, but rather than me say that, I wanna hear it from you. Tell us a little bit about the business journey over the last decade and where Adagy is right now as a company. So I'll give you a little bit of the backstory on me. Uh, <laughs> I cut my teeth as a software engineer, master's in computer science, doing embedded I, I, my, my engineers think uh, I'm, I'm pretty old because I worked, I, I led the first GPS enabled phone at Motorola. Uh, so who remembers phones with that GPS, right? So fast forward, I, I, I realized running a business and as an MSP, that same empathy, you've got to be able to learn how to provide value. And I just jumped in head first into the sales business. So I, I joined CA from, from being an engineer. All my, all my friends and family were like, Jason's going to fail. <laughs> and <laughs> from there, I saw what was happening in the MSP market in 2007. And while in San Francisco, I moved to Kaseya. And, and there, I was there for eight years, uh, a lot of different uh, roles in the company. Uh, in Italy, I ran sales operations worldwide and, and was like, there's so much PC business out there. Nobody's focusing on Apple. Mm -hmm. So quit my job. I had a second child in the way and just focused in and bootstrapped the business. We're... Over 70 employees, we have uh, almost 2,000 MSPs, which obviously they themselves support about 5,000 customers. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. And we've got, you know, everywhere from the Energy Foundation, Goodwill, Salvation Army, a lot of different, uh, you know, Harvard, uh, University of Maryland, uh, large churches, but on the, on the corporate side, massive organizations that use us, a lot of tech companies, and then the MSPs, that's our bread and butter. We... We, we, we love working with them because they themselves will grow their business and in growing their business, we make more money too. So it's the right way to drive more growth. And, you know, again, we're seeing that 60, nearly 60% growth uh, of our MSP portfolio. And we're just, we're just delighted to see that. Oh, that's fantastic. So, hey, listen, you, you know a little about me in that, um, 
I don't want to be an MSP cheerleader, but I'm also an advocate in that I, I really respect business owners, number one. I really respect the MSP software industry for helping those business owners to help Main Street USA and, and beyond, like worldwide now. Um, but you used a key word that I think is super important to all this, and that's the word empathy. You seem to still relate with the MSPs, even as adage grows. How, are you, like, how closely in touch are you with the MSP base to, to maintain that empathy and, and understand their businesses? I mean, as we scale, it gets harder individually for me, of course, but I, our, our, our virtual user conferences we do, we just finished ours in February. Uh, we we're doing them every six months because the amount of innovation we're pumping out. But it's, you know, I empathize with the fact that when a customer has a problem, they call the MSP, it's usually the business owner that picks up and handles that. I mean, mm -hmm. they're on the front line just as anybody else. And if you can't have empathy for, for that level of commitment and um, trust that, that customers put into those MSPs, we're in the wrong business, right? So I'm, I'm a, a huge advantage, like even our pricing model, I'm not going to get into this, you know, being a tactical component of it, but we literally are like AWS. I didn't want people to be roped into annual contracts, pay cash up front. You literally uh, fire a client, you take those machines out of outage, the billing stops that day. If you are not making money, we're not making money. As long as we keep that alignment going, I think that's a really important component to making sure that everybody stays swimming this, in the same direction. Got it. So, so you have a scale up, scale down model. It's instant. And, and generally speaking, it's a scale up right now because the market's growing and you're delivering for the MSPs. It's great to hear. So one final question, and it's easy one. For, for MSPs that want to learn a little bit more about you or Adagy, where do they go? Any particular website or email address? How should they reach out? We got a lot of resources on adagy.com and a really quick demo we can take you through it. I think the other thing people get uh, overburdened with is you have a tremendous amount of resources that go into traditional, as you said, general purpose RMM. We're a lot easier to use and we're, we're a focused, sharper tool for what you need on the Apple side. And also just, you know, take a look at the opportunities that may be coming across your desk to work with Apple clients and you're just not ready or capable to do so. A lot of the business owners don't even know because sales feels like they don't have the tools to do it and they disqualify Apple opportunities. Just keep a lookout and we're happy and here to help you any, any time that's right, that, that, that lines up. Fantastic. Well, Jason, always good to catch up. Thank you for all the briefings over the years. It's always good to talk to you. Great seeing you, Joe. Thank you.